Okay, guys, so we got this little um, Marcus Garvey um, song by Burning Spear. Okay, a lot to look at here because of all the horns and everything. Um, so we'll break it down into individual videos. Let's start with the drum beat. The drum beat has got a swing. It's very distinctive, which gives it that whole groove, right? There's the beat. So let's start with the beat. Um, I've got a fresh project here, and I'm going to show you what I did with the kit as well. So I've got a new project with an empty instrument track on it. Oh yeah, what was the tempo by the way? 94, right, okay. Uh, why is it just the studio percussion? <laughs> Do that every time. Nothing else, right, um, so 94. Set the tempo to 94. Okay, so I've got an empty instrument track and on it I put the drum kit, producer kit, multi out kit, roots, Open up the stack. It's got multiple outs, each with a multi with its own track. Go into the mixer. Let's start with what we did with the kit. Okay. Sha. Uh, we've got the roots kit. This one. I dampened the kick a lot. Um, tuned up the toms as far as they go and dampened them a lot. Snare drum. I tried different snares. The snare on the original track, it's, it's got that dampened thing. Um, it's a technique in reggae where you uh, can dampen the snare by putting an orange household duster under the... You take the head off the snare drum. Take the head off completely. You then put an orange household duster over the snare drum. Drape it over the top. Then you replace the drum head and you pull the duster all around the edges so it's nice and smooth under the head. Then you put the hoop back on and you begin tightening it up and make sure the, the duster is stretched out under the snare head and you tighten it up and tune it and the duster totally dampens the head and gets that sound um, in a live setup. But I, 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 you can't get that sound from a snare here so I went with the I tried different ones, but I went with this black brass, but dampened heavily. Hi hats, modern bright, cymbals, modern bright. That's all I did. Dampened kick, dampened snare, dampened toms, tuned up a lot, fully. Then I took the outside kick mic completely down, the snare bottom mic completely down, the room mic down, the leak mic down, and the overheads down about halfway. All right, now let's put in a pattern. So, um, this has got an eighth hat and it's a one drop. So let's put um, drum names are on. So switch your drum names on there like that. Okay, so I now that we've had lots of arguments or discussions, if you will people coming onto the comments on these videos going, but in reggae you always play the one drop on the three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, yeah, it seems like that. And that's what rock drummers will tell you. Um, there's different ways of counting reggae. You can count double and half speed or, or regular speed and double speed or regular speed and half speed. There's two different speed counts. And if you watch someone like Bob Marley in a studio or live playing a song when you do the chat the body rises up and it drops down before the chap so you stamp down and lift your body up when you do the chap 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 your your shoulders and your body are rising up when you do the chaps so you're coming down with your body in between which is the beats it's it's hard to explain but you'd have to have played the music for decades Okay, so I put my drops on the twos and fours because it resolves patterns to one bite, makes it easier. So I'm going to put my drop on the two with the side stick and the four. Then we're going to go with an eighth hat, closed hats, eighths, like that. And there's basic beat. Okay, but it's got that swing to it. 
but also it's about the accent on the hats. Every other hat we're pushing up onto this closed foot close, which is a more splashy sound. Tighter, splashier. And that gives it the rising hi-hat. Uh, it's the same as um, in a cheesy old school house track with the rising 909 open hi-hat going tss, tss, tss. that's what we're getting boop, tss, boop, tss, boop, tss, like that and then the last one uh, goes on the open hat and that accents the offbeat um, tss, um, tss, um, tss, like that all of those velocity them right up like that now this open hat I put a little pedal hat in there Again, the foot close, but very low velocity. That is going to close this open hat down and stop it decaying all the way to the end of the bar. All right, because that shuts that down. Should do. All right, and then to give it the swing, there's a little hat there and there. Okay, select them swing C and that swings those two hats but they're really low in velocity a little bit too low at the moment we want to just hear them which gives the swing there and there okay first beat of the bar hat a little bit louder and this on the third beat a little bit louder Like that. Okay, now what did I do to the kit? That's the basic beat. What did I do to the kit? Well, what I did was I'm going to use some EQs that I've been. <coughs> I'm going to use some plugins that I've been um, reviewing and using recently. You can use obviously the EQ in Logic, but uh, this is what I did in the one I've got. We took down the outer kick mic completely. We're just using the inside kick mic, and on here I put this 1073 emulation from T-Rex. Um, I think I've put the kick at 35 hertz with some boost, or it could have been 60 hertz. I'll have a look in a minute. Got some gravel on my work surface. There we go. Um, I think I scooped it out at 360 like that. I think that's what I did. Gives a very deep kick. I think I gave it some drive on the preamp. I could have gone at 60 hertz actually with the low cut at 50 below it. Something like that. Well that gives me that good solid thump. Right and then on it after that I put and again you won't have this but you can use the logic compressors. What I'm doing with that EQ curve there is I'm doing a boost shelf at 60 hertz, doing a low cut below it to cut out the really deep bottom end. I'm scooping out a big broad scoop at 360 hertz in the in the low mids, and giving it some top end at 10, 12k up there. That'll give you what what I've got basically. Um, what what I've got is this basically. I've got a 60 hertz low shelf, but I say it might have been a 30 hertz. I'm not going to go back and look now like that. With a 50 hertz low cut below it at about 18 dB an octave, like that. That gives me a nice bump down the bottom end. Then at 360 hertz, 360 hertz, I'm just doing a big scoop out like that. And then up at the top, I've got some high shelf up there, like that. That's the same EQ I've got, basically. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to put. Um, I'm using this compressor a lot. I really like it. It's really easy just to get a sound. Bam. Okay, that's the kick. 
then on the snare top because I'm not using the bottom channel um, the bottom mic it's shut down turned down on this again I'm using the EQ 73 I can't remember what sound I went for here um, oh, let me check go away every time that studio percussion loads up every damn time only that one loads up uh, what did I do here I did what EQ did I do low cut at 160 boost at 360 hertz and some top end right okay so it's on the snare I did this I cut out the low end the really low end with the low cut at 160 I put some 360 low mid boost just to give it a bit of bottom low mid woodiness and some top end that's it kicks probably a little bit loud yeah something like that and then the hat again I use the EQ 73 but for the hat you know you could use the channel EQ I just shelved down the bottom end something like this and then put some fizz at the top to make it thinner something like that that'll do it well some nice thin hats right okay that'll do so that's my basic beat kicks probably still a bit loud Okay, that's the beat. Yeah. <coughs> but I think I had the heights much louder. They're quite loud, the hats. Yeah. If you want, you can put that. I'll just put a little offbeat variation there in quantize it to 16 swing C you could put that in if you like or like that again swing it you could put that kind of thing in or you could put the classic break one there an offbeat sorry an offbeat there and move that across like that swing that you can put those kind of variations in if you want because you know when you're doing a copy you don't have to make it exactly the same as the original I'm not doing it exactly the same okay there's the beat okay and now I did the kit go back to the original Here's the original. So here's the original again. There's the beat. Yeah, you can hear the hats are a lot louder on this. What did I do to them? Oh, I got them up full bore. The EQ73 is on. Yeah, I'm doing a low cut at 300 hertz. I'm cutting the mids as well. I'm doing a very big 12k boost at the top. Yeah, so they're, they're just a lot louder. Seems to be some sort of flam going on. It just sounds like there's more than one hi hat note going, going like a flam on these hi hats. I don't know why. 
That's odd, isn't it? Can you hear that? It's really strange. Why is it doing that? Very weird. It sounds like there's a flam on these loud hats. Kind of, kind of like, bottom, bottom, like that. That is so weird. It's like logic playing silly buggers because it's not doing it on the other one. Oh, it is. Well, when you make it loud, it obviously get a little doubling of this hat being stamped on. Oh, that odd. Well, there you go. That's that's the sound anyway. But obviously, I've got the hats louder. I've got them right up like that. And on the 1073 EQ I'm using, I'm boosting the output of the EQ. So I've got it more like, you know, boosting the whole output. So the Hyatt's really cut through, that's the point, right? Oh, okay, so that's, that's how I got the beat. And then let's go back and wait for that. Is the percussion gonna load? Yes, <laughs> there it is. Just you, isn't it? It has to be you every time. Right, um, so that's the basic beat. If we just look at what it's doing on each pattern, because like there's, whoop, there's four bars, right? Let's hear it with the music. Okay, so let's look at all those four patterns. And they're all pretty much the same. Right, that's the same. That's the same. That's the same. That's the same. In every one, it's the same, the same pattern. Now, there is a fill, uh, this fill at the end of this section, leading into that bit. Yeah, let's just solo it. So, again, because I'm dropping on the two and the four, it makes it easier to put these fills in, because the fill is going to happen... I just I find it easier. So there's the drop on the two, there's the drop on the four, but it's missing because there's the fill in the last half of this bar here. And the fill is coming in on the third beat. One, two, da 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 But these notes are I space them by I. Right? It starts on the third beat, ends on the third beat in the middle, eighth, and these two are just positioned by I. You can hear I've got some spring reverb on the snare as well, by the way. And to do that, I just went to the snare channel, put an auxiliary send on it, sending out to the first available bus, which for me was bus four, right? That creates an auxiliary return at the other end of the channel here, receiving on that bus, bus four, right? And then I put a space designer on it. I used the small dark spring you can use any spring reverb you want. And then I just sent some snare out. Only the snare of the drums is going to the reverb. Just a bit of reverb on the snare, right? Okay. <coughs> so that's that fill. Can you see that? One, ch, boom, ch, ch, boom, drop, ch, du, 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 gap, bam, on the last eighth. But the timing of uh, this, as I say, I put that one on, on the third beat, that one on the second eighth in this beat, the middle eighth in that beat, so 16th, 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 16th. So first 16th, second, third 16th, empty the fourth, right? So that's the eighth in the middle of that bar. And then these two are spaced them by iron. They've got less velocity than that one and that one. And that little leading in note is right in the middle and that's got less, much less velocity. It's a little grace note leading into that fill, right? Which you position by I and listen. And then that on the last eight. Right, that's it. No crash or anything. Let's go back to this thing. Four bars of it. <clears throat> so it's a basic beat over four bars. I started with this.
bass line I use the subby bass preset from the library because uh, it's the you know like bass subby bass instrument right but um, I changed the bass amp to the Ampeg one with the mids down the treble almost completely down a bit of bass a little bit more gain just I like this amp but I still kept the sub bass on it the sub bass thing but I lowered the amount of wet I don't want all that it's, it's not natural this right, and then I use the EQ 73 uh, what I'm doing on this I'm giving a big boost at 35 Hertz right down at the bottom so that would be a low shelf at 35 Hertz 11 dB of boost I'm dipping out minus 5 dB cut at 360 Hertz to scoop out the low mids giving it some drive on the preamp a little bit of top end right and for the bass let's just look at one pattern this is bar one right, and here it is Right, it's just do 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 do. So in this, there's one beat, first beat of the bar, last two sixteenths, gap, middle two sixteenths in this beat, then the third beat repeats the first beat, note, sixteenth gap, last two sixteenths, do do, and then that fourth beat repeats the second beat there's two notes in the two sixteenths in the middle okay and I did it an octave higher up there at D2 so I could really hear the uh, the pitch always do your bass because you've set your bass sound up to be very warm rounded and bassy and, and then when you try and do your bass lines down in the bottom octaves it's really hard to hear the pitch I, I say this every time it doesn't matter if you're doing reggae or rock or, or dance music if you're having trouble hearing the pitch put it up an octave and then you can really hear the pitch because what can happen is you think you've got the right bass note but actually you haven't it's flat or sharp and you don't kind of notice it but it's disturbing things somehow um, it doesn't harmonically it makes it sort of discordant but subtly so you don't really know where it's coming from so I brought it up an octave and did that yep. then took that and load it all down do 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 but made a bigger gap that's one three semitones between these and only two between these but basically that half of the bar is just repeated there but there's a bigger gap between these to keep when it drops down that tone here it, we need that bigger gap to make the to make it harmonically right right bring the whole thing down to the lower D And notice the velocity I'm using, 55 velocity, because with these bass instruments, these software instrument basses, if you have louder velocity, it can cause the samples to play differently. If I put the velocity right up on these, it'll have a different sound. Yeah, it's a bit hard to hear, but it can happen on a lot of these, so be careful about that. <coughs> to get a nice soft rounded soft instrument bass use low velocity because there's normally a point around the middle where it switches to a harsher sound a more biting sound so for a softer sound use a low velocity so that's the first bit and then in the next bit it repeats the opening there just repeats that but then leaves a gap and just does the at the end which is this end right but there's a bigger gap between them doom doom instead of do doom boom boom right du, 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 du. 
boom, boom. Fourth beat of the bar, boom, boom. Whereas on the first one here, it's just, these are, that note isn't there, it's there. So it's do do instead of this little do do. It's do 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 do. Right. So all we're doing is spacing those two notes out wider. This is the exactly the same as the opening of the first pattern. Do whoops. Do 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 do. Exactly the same here. So I just copied that pattern over. Do 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 do, and then took all that out and took that note from there and spaced it back to there instead and that's what you got like that boom boom and then the next beat the next bar rather back to the original pattern right boom 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 and the last bar one bloody thing get on there. And the last bar is the same as the pre of uh, the second one. Do do sorry so that and that are the same and that and that are the same. So bar one is the same as bar three and bar two is the same as bar four and that gives me my four bars for the basic. And that is the bit of the song that bit, that bit, right? And then, and then it goes into the. So there's another one of those repeated, right? And then it goes into the middle bit or the chorus bit. Right. Let's look at the drums. They're the same, just the same, the same. The same. I did a little variation at the end here. A little variation. So the drums are exactly the same. But I did a little variation here. That little classic da da da. I showed you that so many times in the one drop tutorials. It's just drop and then third beat, snare, snare kick on the fourth beat snare okay it plays this bit three times three full cycles not four three like this so for the chorus it's 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 repeats three times instead of four he sings over two and the last one is a fade is a, like a the outro and I've a little tiny fill in there little tiny fill hello my name's tiny Phil not big Phil, but tiny Phil. <laughs> Actually, just reminds me. Um, I knew a famous British band. I didn't know them well, but I did some work with them. A fair bit of work. <coughs> and um, in the early days, they, they were playing around some pretty rough clubs and things. And the scene they were playing on, uh, which was the British skinhead oi uh, whatever scar whatever scene that, it could be quite hair raising some of the people um they had two <laughs> they had two guys who worked for them and did some security as well as loading and things and one was huge <laughs> he, he was massive like this huge skinhead and he was the visual deterrent all right he was about six foot three, four, whatever. He would just step forward. He was the visual deterrent. But if that didn't work, then they'd send in the other guy. He was about five foot four. <laughs> <coughs> tiny, tiny little bloke, but he was the really dangerous one. 
Little Phil. Oh, his name wasn't Phil, but... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, watch out for the little ones. Um, so, yeah, there it is. Um, the last little bit of that section. I'll put this tiny little fill in. The beat is exactly the same. Everything's the same. Hats drop on the two. Hats with a little offbeat there and the little offbeat there and the drop on the four. I'm just putting a little tiny double snare on the softer snare, the snare centre, and a loud snare there on the last sixteenth. That's all it is, right? So this is a little blah bam, ba dam bam, right? They're over spilling a little bit like that. It just adds a tiny little fill. That's all it is, right? That's it. That's the drums. So that's you know they're they're the same all the way through. I put that little variation in. Um, where is it? There, that little offbeat variation there. Yeah, that boop tap t -t drop t that. Bad I've showed you that in the one drop tutorials. It's a standard fill. It's on Stir It Up by Bob Marley. If you're not really into reggae, that's a, a common track everyone's heard that's got that fill in. It's a standard one drop little fill. It's like hi hat, work in the hi hat. Boom. Like that. And you're doing the kick drum at the same time. Dun, dun, bo, dun, dun, dun. Okay, right. So that's it. That's the drums. Uh, now that I've shown you the bass in the verse, right? We've already looked at the bass in the verse. Bass in the verse. There's the bass in the verse. And it's just the same pattern. Let's open that up. So, boom, boom, boom. Then boom, 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 Chorus, I'm not sure I've got this right. The bass is very, very, very low in the mix. I didn't spend too much time analysing it. It might be slightly different to what I've got, but what I've got works, right? And this is what I've got. This is, this is going to be a tough one, this. Right. Right. Dum. 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 So, dum. 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 And it's... First beat of the bar, boom, and then that little sixteenth drops onto the second beat of the bar there, boom, 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 boom. Third beat of the bar, boom, dum, dum, do 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 dum, dum, gap, do do do, dum, do 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 dum, dum, dum. Let's bring it up in pitch. Up to G2. This is it. Let's hear that again. Pause the screen, pause the video here. That's the pattern. Doom, do, 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 like that. Right. The next bit, I think, is exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly the same. Let's put this back down an octave. Right, and then the second two bars is the same. And then the last two bars, because it's three repeats, is the same again. That's it. That's it. Now we're back to the main riff again. The main riff. Okay, there's the pattern if you want to analyse it. That's it. That's all I've done. The intro, is the intro any different? Well, the intro is interesting because the guy comes in, you don't hear the count. Like, one! Oh. You don't hear the count. I am the count, the Dracula. You don't hear the count. One, two, three. Like, right? You don't hear it. Let's cycle that. One, two. So it's like one, two. Yeah? One, two, three, four. Diddle 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 diddle. Yeah? So one, two, three, four. Diddle 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 diddle. Two, three, four. And again, I had to space these visually. Right? Because they're not on the sixteenths. I don't know what that is. We could change the grid. Go to custom. Change the grid here. To, ooh, let's change it to 24ths. They're on 24ths, you see. That one's a little out. Come on, you. Get on that 24th. So they're on. Snap to absolute value. Get on that line. So the little 24ths for that little fill, right? But I did them by eye. Like that, 16th grid now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here we go. I'm playing the drums. Right, ready. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's the intro. And the bass does this doom, doom. That's it in the last quarter beat. Like that. And the organ is working with the bass. There's the organ. It's right up there. So what I did to get the organ is the organ ghosts the bass. The organ plays exactly the same as the bass. All right? Um, look. That's the whole intro. Everything up to the middle bit, the verse, uh, the chorus, right? And we're looking at the whole lot here, bass and organ. There's the organ notes up there. There's the bass notes down there, and they're a copy of each other. So I made the bass, then I copied it onto the organ track and just brought it up two octaves. So there's your organ, and it's mirroring what the bass is doing exactly. So all I did was I got the bass for the intro, that first two little notes right at the beginning. Oh, come on, back. Those first two little notes right at the beginning with the drum fill at the intro, right? One, two. Duh, duh, with the snare hit. Dap, dap, right? That's the snare hit. Duh, 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 dap, dap. Bass, duh, 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 duh. boom, boom. Organ, diddle. Organ, diddle, diddle. Right, same as the bass notes, right? So I made the entire bass pattern for the intro. It's just the same all the way through, apart from them little two notes at the opening of the fill at the very beginning. Then we're into the first beat of the bar there. All right? So I did the whole 
I did the whole base, got the base all the way through, and then I just dragged a copy onto the organ track and brought it up two octaves. That's it, that's all it is. Let me get that. And now we're into the proper verse. The verse begins here because we're working a bar late because there's a one bar intro. Right, the little fill, the bigger fill, big fill, that's the fill leading into the first verse. So that's the intro there. Right, counting, four bars, right. <laughs> Right, and again, you'll see that this fill is probably using 24ths. It's just, all I did was I kept the beat the same, but for the second half of the bar, I put that fill in. And ending on that note, there's a gap in the middle there. Nothing plays there, right? No kick, nothing, right? And if we put the grid to 24ths, we'll see that that fill is on 24ths. But this is slightly towards them, because that's a little grace note, right? So that's got kind of like a swing note. We could get that note there and put, go back to sixteenths, that note. I've just placed it visually in the middle of that sixteenth. That's it, that's the fill. Da 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 da, -da on twenty fourths and that on the last eighth. Yeah? Huh? That's it. Then we're into the verse proper. Everything just plays the same. The beat's exactly the same. The bass and the keyboard are just mirroring each other, only the keyboard, the organ is op two octaves up. No fill going into the next section, the chorus section. There's no fill. There's hardly any fills in this track. Okay, and then we're into the next bit. The drums, let's just look at the drums. The drums are exactly the same as for the verse, exactly the same. We just got that little swing going on. All right. I just put that little variation in. It's not even in the original track, I don't think. I put that in. And this is the outro two bars, because it's the chorus is four bars and two bars of outro. And I put that little fill there. Blah bum and then it goes back into the verse and I put a crash at the beginning of the verse there. And that's it, and then it's the same repeating key, um, organ and bass playing the same thing, mirroring each other for eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars, and then into the chorus again, which is six bars. Two, four, and two bars of outro. And it's just the same. Now the in the chorus, the organ is not mirroring the bass, as far as I could hear it. So the organ only mirrors the bass in the verses. When it comes to the chorus, I'm doing a bubble organ, like that. <coughs> but I'm not going to do that. I'll, 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 we'll come to that in the next tutorial. Now again, I, I made this up. The chords are basically right, but you know it's really hard to hear what's going on in that mix with the keyboard. 
So I just put a classic bubble in. I added some little variations, like a long sustain note there, two a long sustain note there, some sustain notes here and there. I'm, I'm putting in the pushes where I feel they work with the music. And to do that, I, I basically did the guitar chords. Okay, and if you've watched the tutorials I've already done, I've done loads of tutorials on this. When you're doing your bubble organ, you do the guitar first to get the basic chords and then you copy it to the organ track. So these chords were simply dragged and copied onto the organ track and they are the basic chords that you can see there. Right, let's unmute that. that so that's the guitar chord there. That's the guitar chord there, the chaps. Then here. So they're the chaps and again here. And here but I filled in all these extra notes so if we go to the beginning that's the guitar chaps for bar one of the of the chorus just well. and then I copied them up to the organ track Right, and let's use the mute tool, mute the notes I've added extra. So there are the guitar chords just copied to the bubble organ track. And then I added in that note. And then a little bubble there. And then there. And then there. Yeah. So we'll get to that in the next bit. The guitar and the organ and everything. Alright? But well, that's the drums and the bass. The drums on the bass. Let's hear it. Just the drums, bass. And the guitar. I doubled up the guitar, by the way, with a chappy guitar doing very chap, chap, chap like this. <laughs> Okay, but then I, there's a second more, in the mix there's a second guitar playing a less tight chords. So I simply copied the guitar chaps to another track and, and just made the notes longer, right? I used a softer flamenco guitar, it's not the right sound but it's near enough, right? A little bit of delay on one side so it's just spread across the speakers a bit and that works with the harder chap just to fill the guitars out more because there's a bigger looser guitar sound to the track which is doubling the bass. So we'll leave it at that and then we'll come back and look at the guitar and the guitar and the bubble organ. See you for the next one.